Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Guerrilla Gaming TV, your one-stop shop for all things Clash. Let's jump into it. Reddit Vortex in SCCW. <laughs> right, guys, before we dive into this, what I would like to say is, what do you guys think of the new logo, the new brand, and everything like that? Drop me a like in the video, leave me a comment in the box below, subscribe to the cha channel if you haven't already, hit on that notification bell, let's jump straight into the action. Okay, day one, we've got Reddit Vortex versus Natural Killers, and we've got Vol versus Vala Mogulu, um, a name we recognize from many clans and stuff like that. We've got a Zap Quake Drag Attack, guys. So we've managed to get quite a lot of value out of the Zap there, CC's down. Uh, one of the sweepers is down as well by the looks of it. So let's jump in and see how it goes. He's taking his time here, he's pondering. He's pondering, seeing what he wants to do. King goes down at 2.30, with the queen working up at 12.30. So you can see he's going to send his drags straight into the guts. Drops a loon and a knee drag as well to help with the funnel. And then all the drags come down, the funnel's nice and tight. A few balloons back for taking on those defenses, trying to get, keep them off of it. We've got a wall wrecker as well, guys. And not only are we using a wall wrecker, we've also got hogs coming out of it, which is a really unusual combination, but seems to have worked quite nicely in this attack. Dragon's now taking care of the queen. We've still got a couple of hogs working through. They're just slowed down by the Giga Blast. And no more spells left, but we've got queen ability, which has just been popped, and we've got an RC ability. RC's working on that scatter shot at the moment. She can go in and work on that uh, uh, the yeah the expo and that multi-target inferno ability just pops now. We've got enough dragons left. This is looking pretty tidy. So a really nice opener here from Vol for Reddit Vortex in week or day one of the Supercell week. And as I say, still got plenty of dragons. It's all about cleaning up now. But this, since this update, guys, this Zap Quake has been seriously, seriously OP. Um, if you haven't given it a try with either Dragons or Lalo, Mass Hogs, Miners, it seems to be really versatile. Obviously, you just need to work on your spell placement, make sure your farms are correct and stuff like that, so you get maximum value out of spell placement. Which Vol done beautifully here, and just got a bit of trash building. From the moment his king and queen went down, he had this attack done in 1 minute 40 seconds. I mean, it's pretty impressive. GG. Okay, guys, jumping in to War 2. And we've got a disease coming in on Javid Shah from Delhi Curd. And we've got a Zap Quake Lalo. So again, going back to what I was saying, Zap Quake, really, really quite OP. Managed to get the CC and the Eagle with this as well. So massive, massive value. Sui's going to go in for the Town Hall straight away. Um, it's sort of out there on its own. All it needs is one super wall break. And you can go in there and pretty much take what you like. Town Hall, Royal Champ and everything. So really, really nice value. Drops a few balloons just to help with fun. Lynn got a minion up there doing a little bit of work as well. King pops ability. One AD goes down. Then the king works around the outside, but that gives plenty of room for the queen to take out the royal champion on the backside. Don't mean to say that in any kind of rude way. And I say queen ability can be popped to take care of the town hall. And then the Lalo can come in down from 10 o'clock, swooping round through 8 o'clock and everything like that. So the idea with Lalo is to try and make sure you keep the balloons in inside the base. Um, using a stone slammer here, which we're starting to see a little bit more of now. A couple of haste just to help bring the balloons through. Trying to get that scatter shot down. That's going to be pretty important. Freeze on the multi and Royal Champ for backup. All looking pretty tidy. Really nice warden ability. Just missed the stone slammer, but that's not okay. The stone slammer is not in any trouble here. And balloons still working through. Just a handful of defenses on the outside. And we do have one balloon, three minions, and a freeze as well. So. We're going to wait for the freeze, I'd imagine, for that wizard tower if required. Royal Champ ability takes most of it out. And this is crushed, guys. Whatever's in that stone slammer doesn't need to come out at all. Only if it's going to be useful for cleanup. In the end, decides to swag the freeze. No worries at all. And then from there, guys, it's all cleanup. 
Really nice attack by A Disease there. Had a really good week. And again, this is just Swag Freeze and Minion Cleanup. So again, guys, get this Zap Quake down. Really, really important. If the base, it is base dependent, but if you can get really good value out of it, to be able to do Lalo without having to worry about the CC is seriously OP. Even I can have a little go at it. Don't know what happened there. Uh -huh. So, Raw Jam's there for cleanup. Got a few pups, balloons are lagging behind, and that is, again, another triple. So, GG, a disease for Reddit Vortex. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to win this war, but let's move on to week three, or day three, should I say. Okay, little Risty coming in on Chuso Barbero uh, from Espan... What's that? Ex Espanols? Nice. Um, good old-fashioned drag bat. So, no zap quake in this one. This is a relatively common star base you'll see with the three islands there. Um, I'm going in from a, a Sui from both sides here. We got Ice Golem and Queen working down from six o'clock and the King on up on his own doing his own thing up at three. There is so much splash damage down at this south side of the base. So if we can get the town hall down and get a lot of these wizard towers down as well. This is absolutely crushed with the bats the remainder. So going in for a short blimp. It looks like there was, yep, there might have been some sneaky goblins in there um, and a yeti as well. So town all goes down, we can have nothing to worry about. Balloons, dragons, all working in between that four and five section. So you can get those scatter shots down and those wizard towers down, these bats are just going to clear right up, guys. So, Tornado Trap just causing a little bit of an issue down at that 3 o'clock section of the base. Goes for another Rage. Nice Warden ability, just to protect from both Scatter Shots and the Eagle Blasts. And can we get that Queen down? We do. Now it's Bats. Bats drop down from 7 o'clock. Working up through, there is no splash on the left on the map, guys. No splash that's going to attack air anyway. So, again, this is really nice. Nice pathing as well. The, t the Teslas out the side didn't really do any damage to the back pathing. Not too much in the way of dragons left. Just um, luring that lava hound with the uh, with an archer just to keep it away make sure I don't pop and you know cause any damage to the bats and stuff like that but this is absolutely crushed and again he's got he's got some more archers if he needs to do a bit more luring as well but the bats are now on clean up nicely good job a little wristy which is just as big as big wristy again don't read into that too much but um gg really nice there Great attack. Good old fashioned drag bat. Into day four and we've got uh, Reddit Vortex. Swigmax coming in for Chaos Threat. Um, and this is a really interesting attack guys. So we've got a Yeti Smash with a Zap Quad Quake. So just watch the value you're gonna get from here. Warden Walk coming down from six o'clock. So the Zaps go down, we're gonna get the um, CC, Eagle Artillery, and we're going to open up the base as well. And we've got two Rages. This is absolutely brilliant. We've got a couple of Super Wall Breakers as well. So this base is it's torn apart straight away. So a really, really nice setup, really nice plan here. So the first Super Wall Break goes down. The second one goes down. I'm not sure it's where he would have wanted it landed, but doesn't make too much of an issue. So Yetis and Bowlers all work straight down. The Wizards are getting toasted by that uh, multi-target Inferno. Nice Rage goes down. They've got to beat through the wall. This is going to be the thing. Where do they beat through the wall? Can they get the Town Hall? Luckily everything's worked into that 3 o'clock compartment. And then another Rage again just to try and beat through the wall just that little bit. Really nice Grand Warden Eternal Tome. And now, look how much access they've got from that quad quake. And we haven't got to worry about the Eagle Artillery, we haven't got to worry about the CC. 
uh, really nice so far. King, Queen, and Royal Champ with ability. A couple of witches for clean up on the outside. Healers are just starting to split slightly, but one of most of them have gone on to the Royal Champion, which is no bad thing. Queen ability goes off taking out the scatter shot. Are we gonna be able to reach that single target as well? It just it's slight too much of an ask, unfortunately, for the Queen. Queen unfortunately goes down. But we still have King ability and we still have Royal Champ. As I say, I think if the second wall break went down where Swag was sort of expecting it to, then this would have, you know, we would have finished with a lot more troops left. But as I say, it doesn't matter. A triple is a triple. Which is still around the outside doing a bit of clean up. Royal Champ ability goes off. Do we get the single target down in time? We don't. So this is all looking a little bit tight. But we do have a Yeti with a full basket. We've got witches and skellies to help do some distractions. Just got to try and see how much we get through here. King ability is also there for powering through a wall. Okay, so really nice king ability. Going to break in to the single target. Single target goes down. We've got plenty of troops to take out the rest of the base. Really, really nice attack. Beautiful plan by Swagmax. Bringing in another triple on day four. Jumping into day five, and it was a bit of a messy war for Vortex. However, Vol still coming in with a really nice Zapquake attack, this time with E Drags. So, as I say, Zapquake is dominating SCCWL this season. Going in with a blimp to try and take out the. I imagine we're going to go for the Eagle Artillery here. Nicely done. You see Yeti Bomb, so Eagle Artillery and Single Target go down. And we've got King working out from 12, and we've got Ice Golem Queen working down from 3 o'clock. Single Target locks onto the RC, that's not really what you want, to be fair. That was that was an unfortunate path in there. But it's okay, we've got E-Dregs. We've got Balloons coming in, we've just got to try and get these Air Targeting Heroes down which is done relatively quickly. See, Eddie's under rage are OP. They really do wreck through bases. Nice Warden ability, as I say. I've just got this back side of the base now. And there's not really much air targeting. Once you've got those air defenses down, which the ones on the south side are doing nicely, the ones on the top side are just getting taken around by that tornado trap. But after that now, there's not really a huge amount that's going to affect these eddies, to be honest. We've got a couple of wizard towers and a couple of archer towers. But as I say, really nicely done. Not the strongest base. We can all admit that. But as I say, it was a triple when required, and it was enough to win day five. So GG Vol. Having a really strong week. As I say, the, when you go all ground target in expos it's just inviting you to reach from the sky roll with the e-drags zap e-drags nice right my main man puma coming in with a queen charge hybrid which as i say shown that the old strategies that still work even under the new update and new meta so got some sneaky goblins helping with funneling Eight regular wall breaks. A lot of splash in there, so. Nice, nice wall break there. Under rage, scatter shot just missing out. This is all looking pretty tidy. Two ice gone and an inferno dragon. The inf Not the greatest CC to be fair, because the inferno dragon is quicker than the ice golems, and after the inferno dragon's down, what's gonna what is going to affect that queen? Nothing. You know, absolutely nothing at all. So, not the most effective CC I've ever seen. I'm sure I'll be proved wrong. Not quite going to get the wall break he would like, I don't think, because that cannon's going to just drag, drag them through. Queen's going to take care of the enemy royal champion. Hybrid's already working through nicely. King's on the outside, keeping that hybrid funneled through so 
So nice heal there. Miner's locked onto the Town Hall. Really good Warden ability, catching everything. Tornado Trap's just going to slow down some of the hogs. We've got a Blimp working in from the south side. I can take that. This backside scatter. And also the enemy King by the looks of it as well. There's some Headhunters in there. Really nicely done. Queen goes down to the single target, unfortunately. Royal Champ is through the top there with ability still. King's still working through. We do have a freeze for this backside Inferno if needed. But there's plenty of miners to overwhelm this base. Luckily, I say luckily, they've just gone through and targeted that single target. Some of them did split onto the outside. But there's still plenty of miners to, to absolutely rip, rip through this base. GG Puma. Swag freeze on the clan castle and swag RC ability, wrecking it with hybrid. Right guys, so War 7 was, there was a few one stars in there which sort of ended up making Reddit Vortex lose the war. However, what you're about to see now is why you should never use internet bases for SCCWL because you're not having a touch of deja vu here. Little Risty against that guy. Um, coming in with a drag bat on exactly the same base. Can you believe it? So, no need to make a triple at the start of the week. Even if he didn't, he has a chance of redemption. So, as I say, really nice plan from last time. All the all the splash down at the south of the base. I'm gonna go for another short blimp into the town hall. Ice, ice Golem's coming out again. Then nothing is really going to affect anything there. But again, we've got archers to drag them away once all the uh, or ground troops are down. So pulling that away now with an archer up to that top side. And again, apart from the CC, it's kind of well. What is it? It's uh, it's deja vu here. Uh, dragons all working through quite nicely. Nice warden ability protects him from the eagle shots. A little bit earlier than the last attack. But again, he's feeling a bit more comfortable with the strategy, so all the splashes down now. Bats are all working through. Even the test placement is exactly the same. If you're going to use an internet base, at least move the traps about. Give the attacker something to think about. Let's like say, plenty of bats working through nicely. Single target goes down. And only big hitting. I think that was the Grand Warden statue. As I say. Bat's still working through. Unfortunately, Dragon's sort of chasing those ice golems as well as that. So are the bats now, but again, this is absolutely crushed. GG, little wristy. Bringing in. The second and another triple basically um, but as I say he's seen this one all before GG and reddit vortex did manage to climb into champs one even with two losses during the week it shows they had a really really strong start um, and as I say good on them really they, they deserve it they are the second clan from the Unfair Warfare family to climb into Champs 2, or Champs 1 should I say, finishing top of the group there on 278 stars to 271, even against the clan that beat them in the last round. So it was all up to Delhi Curd, and as I say, um, luckily 4 Chaos managed to beat them by one star, Delhi Curd. So, and A Disease had a really, really strong week, as did Little Risty, um, bringing in the top there. GG to the guys at Reddit Vortex. Have great fun in Champs 1 next season. Thanks everyone for watching, guys. Oh, leave me a like below, leave me a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you for joining me on Guerrilla Gaming TV. Because getting yourself promoted to Champs 1 with two losses, that ain't a game.